Good bloody morning. I'm Max Ammo. This is Not That Kind of Vegan. And welcome to day one of my extreme 21 day cut. I am the angriest man alive. I curse the earth. I curse the sky. So let me start off by uh, outlining my, what my goals are for the next 21 days. What I want to do is burn off this uh, stubborn, hard to remove uh, belly fat on my lower abs. There's, uh, I mean, a lot of guys have a problem with this. The longer it's been there, the harder it is to get rid of. So I'm gonna be walking you through the protocol I'm gonna be using to get rid of it and you'll be able to uh, see my success because I will succeed. So the idea here is to do 21 days of extreme uh, dieting using the principle of intermittent fasting. So basically I'll be eating around uh, 1500 calories a day is the target all at the end of the day, pretty much in one meal or all after 6 p.m. Now, I mean, it's loosely based on uh, Lyle McDonald's um, warrior diet. Now I wanna stress, this is not a good idea for people who are chronically overweight. You need to make lifestyle changes. However, if you're uh, already in good condition and you just cannot get rid of that last bit of fat this is something you might like to consider now um someone's going to pipe up straight away and say but if you cut your calories that low you're going to crash your metabolism now i really want to say i think uh, met met metabolic burnout is a myth you know the idea your metabolism slows down when you diet is is just pure bro science it actually takes the human body's metabolism two weeks of extreme starvation before it starts even adjusting. So this idea that you have to have a cheat day once a week in order to reset your metabolism and speed it up again, you lose fat faster is a complete myth. And that cheat day is just slowing down your progress, you know? I mean, if you're too weak, mentally weak, you know, to go for more than six days without eating fucking crap, then, you know, that's your business. But please don't advise other people to do the same and tell them it's actually gonna help them achieve their goals because it absolutely is not. I mean, think about it for a minute. The human heart is a muscle, right? If our body started cannibalizing its own muscle just when you went for four or five hours without eating, every time people did a two, three day fast, you know, there'd be a serious risk of a heart attack. And, and we know that's not the case. So let's just push the bro science out of the way. And um, let's talk about the diet. Now, Yes, I won't be eating protein after I train. All my protein will be in the evening. Now, protein timing is really not important, no matter what the supplement companies will tell you. Actually, when it comes to uh, gaining mass, carbohydrate timing is much more important, but I'll be uh, touching on that in a later video. This is about cutting today, so. This is one day's food, all to be eaten after 6 p.m. Uh, there's a lot of fibrous vegetables in there. Foods that are high in fiber are excellent for making you feel satiated, you know, making you feel full when you're dieting. Uh, green vegetables, beans are great for that as well. Now, um, this is obviously not a ketogenic diet. In fact, my uh, lowest macro there is fat. So all of that food together, plus I, I get up at 2 a.m. and I drink a protein shake that I have ready by the bed. So together that makes 196 grams of protein. 180 grams of carbs, 48 grams of fat, and my total uh, calories are 1,552 a day. So, what supplements am I gonna be using during this 21 day cutting protocol? Well, the only fat burner I'm gonna be using are regular old caffeine tablets. They're kind of like nine bucks for 100 tablets. I'll be taking 200 milligrams of caffeine every two hours, until I reach a gram. So that'll be five tablets spaced out two hours apart. Um, which is very effective, I find, for appetite suppression and it gives your metabolism a kick. Don't waste your money on these $70 a bottle fat burners from uh, you know GNC or wherever. That guy on the cover who's like ripped to shit, he got their way by using anabolic drugs like uh, Trembolone, uh, Trembolone and uh, Clembuterol you know, thyroid drugs. These guys are not taking that fat burner. I mean, you're basically paying $70 for a bottle of caffeine tablets because that's the only ingredient in there that's proven to work. 
Now, uh, some people might be wondering why I'm not taking any BCAAs because I'm doing so much fasted training. You know, they say take some BCAAs. They don't have any calories in and uh, they'll help uh, stop you losing muscle. Well, here's the thing, right? There are actually more scientific studies proving that BCAAs, particular leucine, slow fat loss than there are proving that they stop muscle loss during uh, fasting. So I cut the BCAAs out completely. Uh, when I'm cutting, I will, when I'm trained to add mass, I will take 20 grams of BCAAs with 80 grams of carbohydrates right before I train because I train on an empty stomach. But as I say, for cutting, cut out the BCAAs. Okay, so let me run you through the training that I'm going to be doing for the next uh, 21 days. So I start off, uh, I, I normally get up around 4 a.m. I like to, I have my morning meditation I do, and then uh, I write for an hour, then I go out for my run around 6 a.m., so I run six miles, peer to peer. Then I come back, take a shower, change into my weightlifting clothes, go into some heavy fucking weights, do the bodybuilding, traditional bodybuilding workout. It's about an hour and a half, two hours. And then um, in the afternoon, I'll do half hour of yoga and then 50 burpees in five sets of 10. And then uh, in the evening, I will go for a three mile run. So that's four training sessions a day. Now, someone's gonna say overtraining, I'm gonna say fuck off, right? You know, overtraining will make you lose muscle. That is a lie for lazy people. Running will make you lose muscle. That is a lie for lazy people. You see these uh, bodybuilders lying back in the ecliptical, barely working up a sweat because they're saying they're gonna lose muscle. They're being lazy, right? It's just fucking sheer laziness. You know, uh, the problem is a lot of people are training purely for vanity reasons, so they're always looking for the easiest route, right? I'm not, I'm training to become mentally strong as well as uh, physically strong. You know, by pushing yourself to your mental limits, that's how uh, you build yourself up as a person, to be strong, you know, pushing through. When your brain says, no, I can't do it anymore, and you force yourself to do it, you show that you can. I mean, that's, uh, that's very character building, you know? And when you get in a real life crisis, you'll be far more able to cope with it because you're used to pushing yourself outside your comfort zone and not giving in to that little voice that goes, oh, it's cold, I don't wanna get out of bed yet. You know, I'm gonna lie in and snooze for another hour. So, on a side note, if you ask me for a training program and I take the trouble to write you one and you even use the word overtraining, like, isn't this overtraining? You know, basically, fuck off, go away. Get out of my gym, go home, eat some ice cream, watch a fucking friend's marathon, whatever the fuck it is you betas do. You know, the only real problem with overtraining for, like, where weights and running are concerned is with your joints, you know, if you start getting joint pain. The idea that uh, it has a negative impact on your muscle mass is simply not true. So, uh, that being said... I will be uh, giving a couple of updates every week because I want you to see my progress. So the goal is to have a defined six pack in 21 days time. So I'll be checking in with you soon. Uh, be good. And if you can't be good, be a bad motherfucker. Kaboom.